As we were listening over our last movie review, Heath offered the helpful suggestion that in the future I start these with a quick plot synopsis so as not to risk losing our listeners as the discussion progresses. Sounded like a great idea, so I decided I'd do exactly that with our next movie review. (laughs) However, except Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas thwarted that effort with its stubborn refusal to have a plot at all. The best plot synopsis I could possibly offer is, Kirk Cameron is at a Christmas party saying words. Joining us to discuss those words is friend of the show and glutton for punishment, Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And what words they are. Oh, my <laughs> fucking God. I mean, I feel like I'm afraid we're not going to be able to articulate the true scale of horrible that this movie achieves. So before we get into the movie and everything, just I have to ask you, Eli, do you feel like you can possibly tell the listeners just how bad this movie was? Oh, oh, I can tell them how bad this was. <laughs> Because it's the greatest experience of my entire life. <laughs> Not only was it terrible, it was fun terrible. Because, oh, yes. you know, if, if, any of our, if anyone who listens watched Persecuted, you didn't have fun. I mean, you kind of had fun being like, oh, this is bad. But it's not fun. You know, it's like watching a fat person fall down. You know, that's, <laughs> you're, like, you're like, ha, that's really funny. And then you're like, oh, he's hurt. Oh, that's, <laughs> huh. This is like watching Hitler fall down. <laughs> Hitler fall down into a, into, a, in a, into a pit of sentient dicks that just start fucking him. That's what this movie, you're like, yeah! Get That's him, exactly dicks! exactly what this movie was like. <laughs> so I think we should start with the title, which was Kurt Cameron's Saving Christmas. Not Saving Christmas. Kurt Cameron was already in there, and it contained virtually nothing but Kurt Cameron. Yeah, no, it's just... It's just Kirk. It's just the closest you've ever been to Kirk Cameron's face in the least pleasant <laughs> experience ever. I'm sure Ke- Kirk Cameron has sexually assaulted boys at at some kind of Bible camp with less distance and intimacy <laughs> than he has with the camera in this movie. Oh my God! This okay. So the movie opens with a fireside chat with Kirk Cameron. The notes I wrote for ju- I wrote half a page of notes ju- just for that monologue alone because it's it's so insane. It's like a professor who goes insane halfway through a lecture because he's like, "Hey everybody, welcome. Here's a fun fact. I'm afraid of bears. Bears are everywhere. They're inside my eyes. Get them out. Get them out. They're inside my eyes." <laughs> Just like, like I love hot chocolate. Are they going to tell us that hot chocolate's pagan too? And I'm like, what are you t- talking about? And I, it's like someone. It's like he wrote that beginning monologue for someone who had already seen the movie and was like, I get it. Great, go back to the beginning. I want to see it again because the <laughs> beginning of the movie references stuff that happens later in the right. movie. <laughs> I wrote down, just in my notes here, I say, the beginning of this movie is a drunk youth pastor right before he jerks off in front of you. (laughs) This is exact, this is the moment. He's like, you know, there's, you got two groups of people, man. That one was really good, by the way. You got two groups. You got the people who want you to, uh, who want you to love and not love, but you do it in a small box, right? They're like, hey, you're in a box, because it's very buddy, buddy. At each moment during this, He's like, right there, like, he's like trying to do a bit with you, but because he's a crazy person, it's like when a homeless person walks up and he's like, hey man, you get it, right? Spiders on top of me. (laughs) You're like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I do not also have schizophrenia, so this is hard for me to get on board with. Oh my God. And this is like just no exaggeration of the craziness of this film. And then we get to the Christmas party where the entire rest of the fucking movie is going to take place. Um, I mean, not, not necessarily the Christmas party, because I, I hate to correct you, Noah, it's going to take place inside a van. Well, yes. Inside a van, in a garage, <laughs> Next to a Christmas, Christmas party. party, yes. With, with one man's eye closed. That's, that's for dick sucking. That's, that's what that whole, <laughs> we're going to get to it in a second, but I just want to, I just want to say this. Two guys go out into the garage and sit in a car together. It's because one of them's sucking the other one's dick. <laughs> It's not because they're talking about the meaning of Christmas. I would much rather have watched Kirk Cameron suck that dude's dick for an hour. Uh, <laughs> so, I guarantee you there's a bunch of people in the world who would not agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> All of the ones that saw that. Um, well, now, I, I have to say, because before we get into the SUV where the whole goddamn movie is going to take place, we start off at this Christmas party and we meet 
uh, Kirk Cameron's family, pay, played by his real life family, by the way. He got. I, oh, I love no. that his own sister played it, but he couldn't get his once kind of semi famous, if you were alive, like, and a kid kind of in the 90s, maybe remember Candace Cameron. He couldn't get her. She was too big for this movie. So he got his other sister that no one had ever heard of. And her uh, husband in law, who's the only maybe kind of actual actor in the movie, is named Christian. Christian. <laughs> So we're not doing subtlety in this flick, and he's kind of bummed. He's just not very happy. He's not in the he's not in the Christmas mood at all. And and then of course we have to meet the uh, the token black guy. Don't worry, he's light. It's that moment is so insane. He walks over. By the way, this character never has any meaning, nor does his part in the movie <laughs> no. have any meaning. He walks over to Christian, who's feeling bad, and he's like, hey, man, you hear they're taking away Funkin' Shirt Friday? I can't get rid of my no Funkin' Shirt Friday. And by the way, before anyone thinks I'm racist, <laughs> no, that is no, what this actor does. <laughs> yes! And then they slow down his mouth and make it quiet <laughs> so that we know that, like, he's just a yammering black guy. What this movie wants us to know is, like, look at this yammering black guy and the white man who hates him <laughs> just like doom doom pudding <laughs> pop 15 rape <laughs> accusation <laughs> and christian's just looking at him like you piece of shit and this is a reoccurring theme with these movies every time someone has a monologue i feel like we're at the beginning of a horror movie yes this monologue in the car that christian first gives is the beginning of a horror movie. He's like, I see their sweaty, open faces. <laughs> their consuming mouths. And their wet tongues. And I wonder, what would their skin feel like on mine? <laughs> the, the music in this movie is like someone stole an iPod shuffle of a personal trainer while she got her abortion and was just like, press play. Don't worry, it'll always... Because the music never makes sense. No. It's like, I just can't stand... And tonight's gonna be a good, good night. N at, what, they're literally, they were just like, add music. You gotta add music. It's so echoey and quiet. Because everyone takes... No one has any lines through this movie. And that's important, too. This is throughout the conversation. But this establishes it. All the conversation. It, um... You know, what happens at about half this speed. It's just, again, I, I, if the camera pans down and Kirk Cameron's sucking his dick, this movie makes sense. But since it never pans down, it's crazy. Absolutely nuts. The the villain of this movie, like the person, the, the Uncle Scrooge, which I want to get back to, that he uses the term Uncle Scrooge, because that's actually really important. The Scrooge of this movie is someone who's like, I don't know, isn't Christmas about Jesus? Not when you're a crazy person. Trees are made out of magic. Don't you understand that Santa's a metaphor for butt rape? What's the word Santa backward? Ants nuts. I can see your blood pressure. <laughs> that was the level of argumentation that was offered in this movie. Now, the uh, this is this is when we get the first of three crazy, weird little flashbacks. This is the manger flashback. Right. Well, it, you, you got to remember, he goes, oh, and what's in the corner? Oh, there's baby Jesus. Baby Jesus in the corner. And I screamed as loud as I possibly could. In an empty theater, no one put <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> and there's this echoey silence while the movie's pausing. Right. And from the booth behind me, I hear a guy go, "Ha ha!" <laughs> <laughs> the projection fan. Nice. guy got it. I got it. Awesome. <laughs> from the projection guy. Yeah, he's like, so his problem with the manger, he doesn't even have a problem with the manger, no. which doesn't fit the rest of this movie, because the other, pro he has problems with Santa and Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like them. He thinks they're pagan, yada, yada. Um, he just doesn't think that, like, the manger is treated as important enough. Yes, exactly. So Kirk Cameron's like, oh, well, I got a solution. I'm going to tell you the history of the manger. <laughs> First, <laughs> like, no. I already help, but... like the manger. It just needs to be more centralized. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Listen close. Imagine you're in a cave. And I, I want to talk about this. this well, first of all, I want to say what he calls him. He calls him Uncle Scrooge. 
Yes. He says, hey, man, yes, being he kind of an Uncle Scrooge. Now, the reason he does that <laughs> is because he's so unfamiliar with the Dickens story. Uncle Scrooge? <laughs> Scrooge in the Dickens right. story is not an no. uncle. <laughs> uncle Scrooge is Scrooge McDuck. Duck-Dale. Yes. Only DuckTales. That is... <laughs> That is the source material that Kirk Cameron is working off of, <laughs> DuckTales. Like, which means that at some point they were like, well, we should probably work in that he's being a Scrooge. You mean like DuckTales? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Kirk, like DuckTales. I like that show. You ever watch it backwards? You can see Jesus' eyes. <laughs> sure, Kirk. Yeah, and and Kirk Cameron's narrating it like like. Like someone tortured Carl, uh, Dan Carlin until he went insane. He's like, <laughs> now what you have to remember is that the rock is hard and you're alone in a cave. And I'm like, oh, it's Dan Carlin. If someone, if someone zapped his balls until he thought a demon was inside his eyeball. <laughs> it's a rock and it's covered with straw. No, it's not. No. No, it's not. What's amazing is that so many, this is the first one in the movie, so many of his historical corrections are just fucking wrong. Yeah, right. He's like, you got to remember a manger is what animals ate out of. No, it's not. (laughs) That's where animals lie down. No, it's where they would eat their food. (laughs) Well, maybe sometimes. (laughs) There's another moment where he's talking about the manger. He's like, let's take away Mary for a second and Joseph. Well, first off, he goes, you're probably picturing, you know, clean clothes and white faces. Let's look at Mary and Joseph who are wearing clean clothes yes. and have white faces. <laughs> so then he takes Mary and Joseph and he goes, let's even take J- baby Jesus away. Don't worry. Don't worry. He'll be back. <laughs> Which means that when they test screen this, someone was like, oh, we're changing baby <laughs> No, no, they killed me. Like he disappeared like Marty McFly. That's what it was like. Oh, no! Quick, Joseph and Mary, you got a kiss before midnight or else, or else you won't get back in time to save Doc! Yes, exactly. And this was all part of his bizarre swaddling claw thesis. I don't really want to go into that because I want to save a little more time for his explanation of why Christmas trees are a good biblical thing. And and if you don't mind, Eli, if I'll, I'll be Christian, you be Kirk Cameron. And uh, I'll I'll offer Christian's thing, uh, and if you could sum up Kirk Cameron's counter argument, he says, "What about the Christmas tree? That's in the middle of the whole Christmas decoration thing, and that's not in the Bible. Where in the Bible is the Christmas tree? I ask you." Oh well, okay, great. Say, hey, all right, good question. Hey, <laughs> hey, calm down, calm down. <laughs> hey, all right, you ready? Close your eyes. God <laughs> made a tree. The beginning of the Bible is a tree. (laughs) And Adam takes a fruit down from that tree. Now, now that creates sin. That's, that's our whole lives, right? So what's the way that he could put that fruit back? Well, he can't put it back because he ate him. He ate the fruit, right? (laughs) So the only way for him to put the fruit back would be for him to put himself back. On the tree. And that's why Jesus, the last Adam, put himself up on a tree. And, Don't you see? And then Christian goes, yeah, I do. <laughs> Whoa. Well, first of all, we have to talk about the pattern of Christian. Because this is what happens there. If I may now take Christian's role and you be Kirk Cameron, this is the beginning of every discussion at this thing. Okay, well, uh, hey, Kirk. What about Christmas trees? Because, oh, 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 where is that? Is that in Leviticus? Uh, is, it, is that in Corinthians? Is that in Numbers? Go, oh, look, I'm closing my eyes. Oh, I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> if you ever talk to me that way, I'd be like, hey, man, fuck you. Right. <laughs> Don't talk to me that way. We're I having was going to suck your dick in this SUV, but <laughs> right. now. It's the most, each, each thing is like, oh, oh, no, oh, go. Oh, oh, I don't remember. Oh, is Christmas trees in there? Oh, I, I, I forgot that. Isn't that <laughs> yes. in the background? Is there a Christmas tree underneath? Is there? Is it up Jesus' ass? Does he spread his cheeks and there's a Christmas tree sitting there? It's so weirdly aggressive. And after Kirk Cameron says these nonsense sentences, listen to the words I just said. They were a fairly good summary. After he says that nonsense, Christian acts like he just took the blue pill in the goddamn Matrix. Right. He's like, whoa, you got to put the fruit back on the tree. 
And the right. fruit is Jesus. Jesus is made out of fruit. <laughs> and at the end of the Christmas tree thing, he goes, when you're in a Christmas tree lot, I don't want you to see Christmas trees. I want you to see yourself surrounded by hundreds of crosses. <laughs> And this is the voiceover over the image of a girl who's just seeing like a light pole who looks up and there's this glowing cross. And then she runs to go like tell the message, which is also part of it. He's like, run and tell the message. The Christmas tree tells the message, which means that little girl runs to her parents and she's like, don't you see? This whole lot is just a bunch of crucifixes. <laughs> and then I just I want to flash forward to 10 years later where she's like, crucifixes, got to put them back up on the fruit, fruit on the tree. <laughs> All right, take your medicine, Ashley. Christmas trees are all around. Don't you see? Don't you see the hundreds of crucifixes built into every tree? Sure do, hon. Happy Thanksgiving, kiddo. Now, like I said, there were three main arguments and, and that, that led to these little weird flashback sequences. The first was the manger. The second was the Christmas tree sequence. The third was the greatest moment in all of history, known and unknown, on this planet and others. It's when he started making the elf worship argument and asked, where in the Bible is Santa? And That's... Kirk Cameron actually says, okay, I want you to think of this Lord of the Ringsy. That's the actual goddamn line. And he goes, now listen, because he doesn't just say, I want you to think of this Lord of the Rings. He goes, now listen, this story is actually about a bunch of guys in robes and hats. Boring, right? So I want you to picture it Lord of the Rings, which means this story actually is about a conversation between two people during a papal council. But I'm going to just make shit up because right. it's more fun for me. <laughs> and indeed he does. Remember the people at the beginning of the movie? Who we were like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> we get to see that scene again because we did something terrible in a past life. <laughs> and he's like, he's here. And he tells the story of the ne uh, the Nicene Council? Nicene, yeah. Yeah, yeah Nicene Council, where they talked about the divinity of Christ. And, okay, so we got to clarify what the real story is versus what he tells this story. The real story is that Nicholas is, a, I mean, pretty much universally considered schizophrenic who's got a bunch of money from his dead parents and walks around being like, would you like some shoes? And that's great. For whatever reason, this guy gets invited to the council. One of the members there is arguing against the divinity of Christ. He runs over and he like, Meh, slaps him. And he's like, okay, throw that motherfucker out of here. Come yeah. on, get out of here. And then later on, they're like, you know, violence is actually pretty great. Yeah, he's a saint now. Everyone's a saint. <laughs> Everyone gets one. We got a bunch of them. Build a statue of him. Who gives a shit? <laughs> but what Kirk Cameron turns this into oh, God. is this guy sitting in an inn who's like, he's mouthing the words, think for yourself, which I just loved. <laughs> I love that. Just like, oh, how dare he? <laughs> think for yourself. And then Santa who looks like a homeless person. Yeah. Everyone else in this world, even though it's supposed to be Lord of the Ringsy, he's wearing nice white clothes. He looks like a homeless person. He's draped in string and like <laughs> robes. He's got a big shepherd's crook wrapped yes. in red cloth. And he puts it down on the table in front of him like the gun from Shane. <laughs> Pick it up. Pick up the crook. I don't want him, mister. I'm just here for some gingham from my wife. Pick up the crook. Oh, God. And then he quoted the Bible the fuck out of that guy. Yeah, he goes, in the beginning, there was word, word was God, God, any word, word. <laughs> and then, which is nonsense. And then, and then he goes, and then he smote him on the cheek, at which point dubstep starts to play. <laughs> <laughs> And he ah, beats this guy to death on him. with a cane. <laughs> yes. It's like. As, as Santa of Nordopolis, son of Gloin, wielder of the reforged Crozier of Doom, in slow motion beats him to death like a zombie sequence from above. So he beats a man to death and he's spattered in blood. <laughs> he's spattered in blood. He goes back to the inn and she goes. The girl from the beginning goes, did you get that out of your system? He goes, 
Yes. Now, let's give away some presents. Yeah, he does. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, what? Just like what blood the and then blood drenched just walking through the city. Don't disagree with me or I'll kill you with a stick. Don't go, don't go, don't go. This movie contained a lot of the weirdest fucking things I ever saw. It's, it, 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 up to and including the bizarre, let's just call it finale of the film. When uh, when Christian is suddenly re-energized and wants to love Christmas once more. Yeah. And by the way, the way he proves that is he throws open the door. <laughs> everyone turns to him. And they're like, oh, look, Christian's here. And then he throws himself on the ground. <laughs> While he's on the ground, he has the Kaiser Soze moment where he's like, oh, I get it. The presence of the buildings and the city of God and the tree, the triangle, <laughs> triangles upside down of the Star of David. And the soldiers, the toy soldiers, which are from the Nutcracker, which is a book written by a, oh, don't even get me started. Anyway, the toy soldiers are, a, are the soldiers of Herod. And these Christmas baubles, if you turn them upside down and smash them together, they're boobs, like Mary's boobs. Upside out. Then the nipples are inside out. You can suck them from the inside. When you squeeze your eyes closed real tight, you cry milk. <laughs> and this all happens, we believe, in like a fraction of a second while he, while he's thrown himself on the ground. Yes. And he's lying there hurt because it hurts himself <laughs> on a hard floor. Which, of course, the black sassy character reacts to <laughs> by being like, Slip it up, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> He got the spirit of the Lord in him. If I have a party and someone walks back into the room after leaving and throws himself on the ground, I'm be like, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first question you ask someone when they throw themselves on the ground and Kaiser Soze around on their back. <laughs> and then we get a little Bollywood dance sequence to close it out. And I almost thought to myself... As this is it setting up for this dance sequence that, OK, well, maybe they feel like they needed some kind of professional, uh, you know, production value or something. So they brought in some professional dancers. But nope, it was just the kids from the church. Nope, it is definitely not. It is the saddest dance sequence I've ever seen. <laughs> so in my entire, it's so sad. There's like everyone's just at like 10 or 15 pounds too heavy. And it's obviously they all are in the same like Christian hip hop class because none of the dance moves are too sexy. And that's another thing too. So it's all a lot of like pump and arms and left and right. And, uh, 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 smile. Uh, uh, pose. No one can dance. No one. They hired one Asian guy who's obviously like Asian Baptist and he does a backflip. That's it. And then, and that's it. Kirk Everything Cameron else, does the worm. Kirk Cameron does half the worm. They have oh, to cut yeah. away. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly. He's, slow up. He I'm started to do the worm. They cut away because you know he fell down and he was like, Jesus wanted me to. <laughs> Pride goes before the fall. Shoot it again. <laughs> it's in, It's absolutely in, It's the most depressing thing. If there's a Christian hell, it's just me watching that dance sequence. Over and over again for and just like that's it, that's it. everyone's counting, everyone's moving their mouths, <laughs> counting. <laughs> it's the least professional dance sequence. I did an imitation of it in the thing. I stood up again, <laughs> me and my three friends, and I just danced. And I was as good as everyone on the screen. I was just like clap my hands and boom my shoulder, <laughs> dance and run, do the sprinkler. Jump. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, it was so bad. And then just to cap off how goddamn campy this whole thing was. At the end of that sequence, Kirk Cameron leaps in front of a big crowd of people, throws both of his arms up, and says, let's feast so that we can end this movie with a slow-motion look at white people eating. All right, well, my fear here is that we may never find a worse Christian film to review, but damn it if we're not going to hunt for one out there. Eli, thanks so much for suffering through this for us. Oh, go see this movie. Thanks for having me, guys.